Hello and welcome back to another tutorial in this lecture series. This time it's a tabular arrangement problem that would require us to make a table with four columns. We have already discussed that you have to start solving the logical reasoning questions by fetching data from direct, straightforward, affirmative statements. But that's not all. Another very important factor that you need to keep in mind while solving all such problems is that you need to start by using those entities or objects that are most well connected. That would generally mean the ones that appear the maximum number of times in the given statements. As the chance is that they would give you crucial linkages to fill further data in the table. So keep that in mind all the time. Now let's go to the problem and try and solve it. The problem here mentions six students who study six different subjects and play six different games. Two of these six students are Chinese, two are Indian and the rest two are Korean. Now with the help of the given 11 statements, we have to find out subjects, games and nationalities of all the six students. Now you should pause the video here for some time, try to attempt the problem on your own without looking at the solution. Start the video again only when you are done with solving the question on your own. Let's proceed with trying to solve the problem now. The first thing that we have to do is make a table like this. It contains four columns for names, sports, subjects and nationalities. Now let's try filling this table. The first statement that we would use would be statement 1. It says that Jacob plays football and that he studies history. We can put this anywhere in the table. So let's put this in the first row itself. The next statement would be statement 3. It says that both geography and history are studied by Chinese students. We already have history on the table. So let's just write Chinese here. So Jacob is one student who is Chinese and we still don't know the other student's name. What we know is that he studies geography. So geography and Chinese becomes a block and it can be placed anywhere in the table. So let's put it here in the second row. Moving forward, let's look at statement 9 now. It says that the two students who play football and cricket have the same nationality. Look at the highlighted cells. We just filled football and Chinese. So we can very easily see that we are talking about the Chinese students. Means that the second Chinese student plays cricket. So let's put cricket here and move forward. I think you would definitely have noticed the connection between the first few statements that we used. For example, Jacob was connected to history and history was also connected to Chinese and then Chinese was connected to geography and then football and cricket were also connected. So this way we keep finding the linkages and keep moving forward. Let's look at statement 11 now. It says that John is Indian and he plays hockey. This again can be put anywhere in the table. So let's put this in the third row. Our next statement would be statement 4. It tells us that Julian studies chemistry. So let's put this in the next row. The next statement is statement 10. It tells us that one of the two Indians studies chemistry. So this obviously goes into the highlighted row. We write Indian here and move forward. Look at the two cells that are highlighted now. They are in the nationality column. We know that in these six students, two are Chinese, two are Indian and the rest two are Korean. So the Chinese and the Indian students are already there. So these two cells should be those of the Korean students. So let's just write Korean here. Now let's go to statement 2. It says that Jack has the same nationality as the student who plays tennis. Look at these two rows, the Chinese ones. It's not possible to put tennis here because both the sports cells are already filled. Let's look at the two Indian rows. It's not possible to put Jack here since John and Julian have already occupied the two cells. So the last option left is that of the Korean rows. So we can put Jack in one row and tennis in the next row. Let's look at statement 6 now. It tells us that Justin and Jacob have different nationalities. 
Jacob is Chinese. So Justin cannot be Chinese. We can see from the table that he cannot be Indian because the Indians are John and Julian. So Justin has to be Korean. One Korean is Jack. So the only place left for Justin is this last row. Let's put Justin here and move forward. Look at this cell now. It's the only one left in the first column. That's the names column. And the only person left whose name is yet to appear on the table is Joseph. So let's write Joseph here and move forward. Look at the highlighted cells and the statement 4. It tells us that Julian doesn't play golf. If Julian doesn't play golf, Jack has to play golf because there is no other option. So let's write golf beside Jack and go to our next statement. Statement 7 tells us that the student who plays golf doesn't study biology. It means Jack doesn't study biology. So let's put biology in Jack's row and put a cross over it. Now look at statement 8. It says that biology is studied by neither of the two Indians. We can see in the table that one Indian studies chemistry. So let's put biology in the other Indian's row and put a cross over it. Now we can see in the subject column that the only place left for biology is this cell, highlighted now. So let's put biology here and look at this cell. This is the only cell left now in the sports column. And the only sport left to be filled in the table is baseball. So let's write baseball here and move forward. Our next statement is statement 5. It says that one of the two Korean students studies economics. The subject cell is vacant in the Jack's row. Look at these two highlighted cells. So let's write economics here. Now the last step. This is the last cell left in the subject column. And the only subject left is math. So let's write math here. And with this, we complete our table. We got it quite easily in the end by following the optimal order of statements. Our next problem would be based on linear seating arrangement. The first one of its type in this lecture series. Meanwhile, keep practicing. Expose yourself to lots of questions. The key to getting these problems fast is a lot of practice. Needless to say, familiarity with questions would make you crack them faster in an exam. All the best.